Hello and welcome to the second half of our lecture on the, the Great Witch Hunt. We're going to be looking now at the most important question. Why did this happen? Well, some misfortunes clearly happened without witchcraft. But do you know what? Some misfortunes just seem so bizarre, so undeserved, or both, that to the early modern European mind, Maleficarum seems the only rational explanation for the unexplainable. We've all been there why me? I'm a good person. Why is this happening? What's the chances? Well, it must be Maleficarum, witchcraft. And so one thing we're going to have to understand is that witch hunts could be conducted by reasonable people, motivated by compassion for the victims of witchcraft. And so what we're looking at here is mass hysteria. And what causes this mass hysteria? Well, there's a lot of theories. Now let's look at the first theory. They could say, because this is a time period where the, there's a new Protestant church. Christianity has been split into Catholic and Protestant. And so the new Protestant faith attacked Catholic superstitious beliefs and the, the remnants of pagan ideas. You know, things like holy water, charms, amulets, relics. Now, as Alan Bennett famously wrote in his The History Boys, there are in fact three foreskins of Jesus Christ in Italian uh, Italian no, in Italian um, churches. Now this leads to some really interesting questions. Did, uh, did Jesus have three penises and got circumcised three times? He was the son of God. I presume he could have asked for some design changes, but it seems unlikely. Or was it his first miracle? Was that he, he regrew his foreskin so had to be circumcised several times? Or are some of these actually just fake relics? And so a campaign against superstition and um, and relics and charms and amulets that could easily spill over into an attack on witchcraft and pagan ideas. However, there's another theory that maybe the efforts to purify society by the Catholic prince bishops, what a, what a title it is, you know you've made it if you're a prince bishop, but maybe the efforts to purify society by the Catholic priest bishops as they in their campaign for moral rearmament to try and reform the Catholic Church against the accusations from the Protestant faction. That could they led into campaigns against prostitution, adultery, sodomy, fornication. Maybe that spilled over also into a campaign against witchcraft. Now the Reformation certainly led to the Bible's role as the sole source of truth being strengthened for many, especially as for the Protestants, and they'd have read Exodus 22, 18, thou shalt not suffer the witch to live. But it's one line in the Bible, one line. That seems an awful lot to, you know, the, the 100 years of persecution seems to, it's a lot of persecution to hinge upon, upon one rather obscure line in the Bible. And one thing we should know about this, this theory that it's done by religious enemies of Catholics, against Protestants or Protestants against Catholics is that doesn't seem to actually hold up. It's rare, witchcraft accusations are rarely used against religious enemies. Mostly it's used against the enemies within. It's Protestants accusing Protestants or Catholics accusing Catholics. It's rarely Catholics accusing Protestants and vice versa. And this should make us, uh, this should make us think that actually the people we often hate the most are not the people on the other side, but the people who are we think on our side, but don't seem to be on our side enough. They're thinking, but of course, we all are against those. Why, why aren't you against those? Maybe, maybe you're the enemy within. And with our society having been so, so fractured over the last few years, whether you're pro-remain or pro-leave, one thing I seem to have noticed is, is that the people that people seem to hate the most are people that they think will be on their side, but don't seem to be on their side enough. Really, the, the great witch trials seem to be something like, very much like this, that you, you they used them against their own. Now, it certainly occurred during a time of rapid growth in the power of the modern state. And the modern state took a heightened interest in religion. At this time period, a good citizen is a good Christian. Now, it couldn't have happened without state assistance and encouragement, but the central authority and the high courts tried to try to restrict witch hunts. 
as it came from the localities and from below, and that, that was going to erode their efforts to, to bring government to the people. Now, England had fewer witch trials because we had a highly centralised power of the judiciary in this country. Now, Germany has a lot of witch hunts, but then again, they have a strong localism uh, to, their, uh, to their politics. The central authority in Germany is weak, particularly during the Thirty Years' War. In England, it's strong. And where the central authority is strong, there are fewer witch hunts and witch trials. Where the central authority is weak, then suddenly the people turn upon each other. Now, the worst witch hunts occurred where central authority is weakest. Now, most victims appear to be the result of, of interpersonal tensions between villagers. Now, the, the people they're accusing are, are usually antisocial, unpopular people, so, you know, I'd be doomed. Now, the people that, uh, that they often accuse are, are often known for, for begging and cursing, and also those who turn away the local poor. This was not a good time to refuse to donate to charity, because if there are people that are feeling that you're tight, that you're not doing your bit for society, they will accuse you of witchcraft. Uh, often local people forced the state to act to remove antisocial members of their community. And this was a time of, of, of huge social pressure. From 1540 to, to 1660, for example, the, the population of England doubled. There was an unprecedented rise in prices and a decline in real wages. People are suffering an awful lot in this time period. And you have the, the growth of towns. People are leave, starting to leave the countryside and go and live in the towns. And you have an increase in what we call the mercantile and agricultural capitalism. Now, Radio 4 did some great programs on uh, on the history of money. And there are, there are time periods where most people don't see money. And there are time periods where money becomes very important indeed. Now, what we have here is an, a rise in prices and a decline in real wages because the coinage is silver. And the value of the coin is the value of the metal. 